Okay, so um, the Lord spoke to me. We were we had made a decision to buy the property. We took pledges and all that. And uh, we never had a house, but somehow during that time, it was 96 or 97, we paid a little deposit. I saved enough money, 7,000 and not much. One of my church member is like a developer like that, a contractor, something like that, got to know this scheme and says, Pastor, you want to buy a house or not? So we paid $7,000 to pay deposit to book the house. All right. But anyway, the scheme didn't go through. Uh, they were not going to build those houses there I, for some reason. And the Lord told me, take the money out and give to the building fund. I said, God, then my house how? And the Lord told me this, build me a house first. Then I will build your house. You build me a house first and I take care of your house. I said, okay, Lord. So I took that, that money and I gave to the building fund. Then one or two months later, we had to take a pledge and the Lord spoke to me. I said, God, how much should I give to you? I, the Lord spoke to me to sell my car. At that time, I own a Proton Vira. It's not a very expensive car. That's only, the only thing that I have in my whole life. Uh, only property I have. I don't have a house. I only have one car. I bought it new for 50 some thousand and I was paying five years installment for it and I paid four and a half years and six months more to go. It will be happy luya for me. I'm no longer linked to the, to the car. The car is totally mine and I look forward to that and the Lord said, sell the car and put into the building fund. I said, God, you must be joking. You must be kidding. You sell the car and you give to the building fund. Now, of course, I discussed with my wife, you know, and then finally one Sunday night before I make the decision, I had a family meeting. My son was seven years old at that time. And then we have a family meeting and I said to my family, and you have to tell my family because suddenly dad will have no car, you know. It was 97, beginning of 98 at the time. And I said, you know, um, the Lord told Daddy to sell the car and give to the building fund. What do you all think? And my seven-year-old son said, Daddy, if God spoke to you, then you obey him. <laughs> what do you know, seven years old, huh? You know, uh, God speak, I'm obedient God. But, but he said that in my heart, I know it was like a, pe a spear right at my heart to give to the Lord. The next day, I, was, I drove my car to Sinju Jitpo, the, the newspaper, you know, newspaper to advertise my car. You know, I've never cried before in my whole life. Even as a Christian, when God touched me, you know, I always believe as a man, Lao hit pat lao loi. Liu xie, I don't know what you call it. <laughs> you know, Chinese, are you shit, shit blood, you don't shit this, you know. So, but you know, I tell you, driving to Sinju Chipo, I was crying, you no, know, cry, cry, cry. Oh God, I only have one car. It's my only property. That also you want. Why you cannot ask the rich man to give or the rich woman to give? Why you ask poor me give? If I give to you, I got nothing else. How about my future, my children? Oh, how? Ah. Drive the car and then reach there, park the car quickly, wipe out the tears, go and put advertisement. And then the car, you know, I put about three or four thousand dollars more than market value. So that if you cannot sell, then it's not my fault. <laughs> you know what? I put the advertisement out. On Tuesday, the advertisement came out. The first in the morning, I got a call already. Want to look at my car. The first guy want to look at my car. So I, we, met, we met in the afternoon and he saw my car. He looked left, looked right, see underneath, see everything. And he asked me, what car are you buying? I said, I'm not buying any car. Why? You, it's not logical, right? You want to sell your car and you're not buying any car. So what car are you driving? Do you have any car? I got no car. Then why you want to sell the car? How to tell him I want to give to God? He said, I sell, right? No. You kill a fella, who is, who is your God? You want to give to church, you kill a fella, you got no, no car. Then he said, I, I, I just want to sell it. Then he suspects something wrong with the car. Look, look, you tell me, is there anything wrong with the car? I said, nothing wrong with the car. It's a very good car. I said, nothing wrong. The first, the first fellow who saw the advertisement called me, first fellow who see the car, drove off my car. I saw the car went, hey, bye bye. <laughs> and I gave the money to, to the building fund, 30,000, everything, give it to the building fund. And then I got no car. Oh, praise the Lord, some members, 
lend me their old car. There was one car, that car was so rusty, you know, and it was like a Pentecostal car. Boom, boom, ging, dun, 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 boom, 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 ging, boom, boom, like a motorboat like that. Sometimes I thought whether I'm driving a car or riding a motorboat. Boom, 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 boom. But that was good enough. You understand me? Some, some, some rich people got a lot of car outside but never lend me. Ah, yeah. Praise the Lord for the body of Christ. Lah. Okay, so I was driving this car and very quickly when I parked in my house, I quickly ran inside the house. Why? Because I scared my neighbor will come out. Wow, too me su leh. How me su? Why you sell your, your nice car and buy this kind of car? Why you lost money in the share market lah? You went gambling ah? You bankrupt ah? Quickly run in, you know? And you know what? More than just the car, God was dealing with my heart. Right? God was dealing with my heart. So, after that, the church has been built complete already. One day, I said to the Lord, Lord, your house done already. How about my house? <laughs> and God said, okay, what house do you want? I got four conditions with regard to my house. Four conditions. Now on high side, I should have asked for more. But anyway, <laughs> don't be greedy. Lah. Okay, okay, sorry, I got... So, <laughs> so I asked God for four conditions. I said, I want a corner house with a piece of land. Okay, may not be big, but a piece of land. I want a house that's at more than 20 feet wide. Because most houses is 20 feet wide. I want more than that. I want a house with five rooms. And I want a house with a long bath in my toilet, in my bathroom. So I can lie down and read newspaper. Okay? Not Bible, after Bible drop in the water, but newspaper. Okay? So, <laughs> so I, I prayed that, and that was my condition. And uh, so, I, th I don't know what year it was, about 15, 16 years ago, the year 2000, yeah, year 2000, uh, 1999, the Lord sent somebody to our church. He, she was just six months attending our church, all right? All the old ones, I don't know what happened to them. Lah. Only the God sent new ones, okay? Old ones are blinded. Uh, so the Lord sent this lady to our church, and uh, one day she called me to her office. I said, come to my office on Monday. I want to see you. And uh, I went to her office, and she wrote me a check, all right? Enough to pay down payment for a house. That was what I needed, actually. I don't have enough money to pay down payment for a house, okay? So enough to book a house, to pay down payment for the house. So I went looking for a house. I found one house actually, I kind of like it, and I said, God, is that the house? And the Lord just asked me this, this house got how many rooms? I said, four rooms. See, meet your requirement. Uh, uh, no, then don't buy the house. So today, I'm staying in a house, a corner house with a piece of land, it's 22 feet, and the whole piece of land is about 22 by 85. That's quite nice. And I have five rooms in my house, and I have a long bath in my bathroom. Yeah. All four conditions met. Isn't it God good? You know, God is very good. God is very, very good. And of course, I drive quite a pleasant car, all right? Not a very new car, but quite a pleasant car. <laughs> Got one star on the car, okay? So I really. Thank God for what He's done because the scripture tells us when you sow, God will cause you to reap. And the Lord has provided for me. And now I'm telling you, I'm just six months away from fully paying off my house. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Ayya! Let's go to the next subject. <laughs> Let's look at Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6 and verse 38. I'm sure God didn't hear that. <laughs> Luke chapter 6 verse 38. And let's close with this verse. It's a very powerful verse. Alright. Are you alright? It's 12.20. Are you hungry? No. Huh? Okay. Give and it shall be given to you. How wonderful it is. Do you think you can ever outgive God? No. Because God is a giver. His God has a sowing nature. Give and it shall be given to you. How does God give to you? 
and he described it. Jesus described how God gives to you. Good measure. What do you mean by good measure? Now, some of you older ones, all right, have you, do you still remember the daching? No? You know, the daching, what you call it, I don't know what you call it in English. There's a piece of rod there, and then huh, there's a wing scale. It's called a wing scale, something like that. And they put the fish there, you want to buy, and then there's a little plate here on this side, and he put a, a weight on it, and when it balances, that's the weight of the fish. That, you call it good measure. How does God give to you good measure? He owes you nothing. God gives you good measure. And press down. How does God give to you? Press down. Press down. Remember you ladies, when you go on tour, or you go shopping, shopping, and you put all your things into the bag, all your five new bags, your, your ten dresses, and then your jewelry, and your toner, and tuner, and night revival cream, and morning survival cream, and then night whitening cream, and then anti-crinkle cream, cucumber cream, aloe vera cream, coconut cream, durian cream. You put all the things inside the bag. Wow! Cannot zip up. Press, press down. Press down. See, you cannot zip. Press down. Close the cover. Sit on the bag. <laughs> Honey, can you please zip up? Okay, not my dress, dear. It's the bag. <laughs> See? Wow, the bag like bouncing like that. That's how God gives to us. Press down. Shaken together. Remember, ladies, when you pour biscuit into the tin, what do you do? Full ready, what do you do? Shake, 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 shake. <laughs> then the biscuit go down, right? Then some more, you put some more. Full ready, what else you do? Shake some more. And then you put some more. And that's how God gives to us. Press down, shaken together, and running over. Running over means the container cannot hold what God's blessing has for us. Running over. Remember those days when you date your girlfriend or not? You take her out for dinner and then you look at her eyeball to eyeball as you pour the tea for her on the cup and you look to her eyeball and I love you. My love for you is overflowing. <laughs> and she said, so is my cup of tea. <laughs> Oops. How will God bless us? Over flowing overflowing i want you to know we are living testimony how god bless us we don't have a lot but we have enough i have three kids studying two in singapore and then the, the money drop our money drop huh? and then one in kl studying three three i i i i i'm not i'm the father but i feel like i'm the atm machine like that Hello, Daddy. I asked, how much you want? <laughs> Some more no need cut one, you know, they all. No need put cut, no need go bank. Just what's happening? <laughs> but I'm telling you, God provide. God provide. You look at my bank account, it will scare you. <laughs> but God never fail. He never failed. When I went into ministry, I made a pledge to God. I told God, God, I will never ask one thing for myself. If I ever need anything, I will ask you. I'll never ask one thing for myself. But God is very good. God is very good. I can tell you story after story. This one also somebody bought one. Somebody bought for me, latest one. I never asked one. This one also, someone gave me one. Never ask. You want this testimony? Hear this testimony, no? You want to hear this? This is the latest iPhone, huh? You want to hear this testimony? Just last year only, we had an all-night prayer meeting. One or two weeks ago, I was using a Xiaomi phone, na. It cracked, lah. You know, I was what's at my brother, and then I fell from the bus. First time I fall, I missed one step, lah. The crack already my phone. So, it was all-night prayer meeting, and we were praying all night. And it was three o'clock in the morning. Three o'clock in the morning, we had this where we pray for individual needs. So what we do is we pass everybody a piece of paper, you write down your need, anonymous. No need to write your name, just write down what you need, okay? Oh, mother sick la, my children, whatever la, I need my new job, whatever you write down, you put into the box in the middle, 
and we all go and take one piece of paper and we pray in the seat. Finish, we go and change another piece of paper. That's what we do at 3 or 4 o'clock. So that time, I don't know what to write because we have several parents. They always have our ministry on that. So I decided, yeah, I need a new handphone. I want a new smartphone, okay? And then something else. Put the paper in there. No name, you know? No name. So pray, 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 pray. Then two weeks later, one church member WhatsApp me. Pastor, do you need a phone? I say, yes. I need a phone. I said, what phone is it? He said, iPhone. I, uh, iPhone, I was thinking an uh, old one. Uh. iPhone 4S, uh, very gem. Uh. Uh, I used to have an iPhone 4S. <laughs> very gem, I said. Then he said, it's an iPhone 6. My phone nearly dropped down. <laughs> you want or not? I say, um, uh, let me pray about it. Um, <laughs> no, no, I want that. No time to pray. Uh. Say yes. You know, God is very good. God, he, they got it as a company, you know, whatever target they had, they had a, it was free. And praise God, they thought about a pastor. Lah, huh? Give to me. And you know what? God is so good. And ever since then, a lot of my church members asked, Pastor, when is the next prayer meeting? All night prayer meeting. <laughs> God will always bless you when you are faithful to Him. I tell you, it's more, excited to, more exciting to get it free than to go to shop and buy. <laughs> God is so good, isn't it? You know, God knows the smallest thing about us and He cares. He knows your need, every one of your needs. And so today, as we give to Him, I challenge you, let me encourage you, write a figure that God lay upon your heart. Because if it comes from God, God already has a plan. Say, God has a plan. God has a plan for you. Amen? Let us pray first. Lord, we thank you for your precious word, for your wonderful truth, and for speaking to us. Today, we recognize you as Lord of our life. We we'll surrender our finances to you. We we'll surrender our gifting to you. We pray that you will use it for your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray.